All the while, Mussolini's propaganda machine churned out images of a thriving country and a virile leader. Il Duce stripped down for the camera, worked side by side with the peasants, and wrestled wild animals. Never mind that this one had no teeth. Nonetheless, it was working. Mussolini attracted fans worldwide, including Thomas Edison, Sigmund Freud, and Mohandas Gandhi. Here he speaks to his many supporters among Italian Americans. I tell it, the Italians of America who are working to make America great. Although a younger Mussolini had condemned censorship as shameful and dangerous, he now made it the hallmark of his regime. The Duce renewed his passion for journalism by making himself a kind of editor-in-chief for all of Italy. Every morning he would grab 20 or 30 newspapers and with his red and blue pencil he would mark the things that were right and wrong. Next, the editors of the various papers would hear from him with compliments or scoldings. And any foreign journalist quickly learned that Mussolini's government did not believe in freedom of the press. At the time that I went to, uh, to photograph uh, fascist Italy, uh, there was a strong restriction against uh, foreigners coming in there with cameras. Black shirts were attached to us everywhere we moved. The closest I, I ever got to uh, Mussolini, the two black shirts who were standing in front of my camera had to come to a stern salute. And I made a couple of frames between their shoulders. The photos appeared in Life magazine with a caption calling Mussolini the elderly butcher boy of fascism. The fascist government was not amused. Wood came back to Rome at once, and immediately we were expelled from Italy. Mussolini lived in Rome, apart from his family most of the time. In 1930, for the wedding of their daughter Edda, his wife Rachele made a rare public appearance. The suitor, Count Galeazzo Ciano, was handpicked by the Duce and would later become his foreign minister. And the elaborate ceremony at no less a church than St. Peter's showed that the Mussolinis were now Italy's true royal family. Mussolini was now convinced he'd established his place in history. He really did believe he was a modern Julius Caesar, a man who was going to recreate the ancient Roman Empire. And he had attracted the admiration of a young German who headed a new political group called the National Socialists. Adolf Hitler wrote, asking for a signed photo. Il Duce's answer, request denied. But in fact, this would be the beginning of one of history's most notorious friendships. <laughs> 